from the makers of Coldwater Omo. In the grounds of Stokely House, Mrs. Peel broke cover and tore across the lawn, firing from the hip. Missed. Well, here goes. Mrs. Peel stood still. Conrad sighted his rifle. <coughs> Mrs. Peel threw up her hands, her body jerked forward. The rifle flew forward and crashed into the shrubbery. She lay still. Steed looked across at Mrs. Peel's motionless body. The crowd swarmed around Conrad to congratulate him on the kill. Out on the lawn, Mrs. Peel slowly opened one eye and then closed it again quickly. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 6, the final episode of this story in which John Steed and Emma Peel join forces to defeat Adriana Beardsley and her brother Conrad and fight it out straight from the shoulder. The demonstration of the FF-70 by Lady Beardsley had been an unqualified success. That is, if one wanted to see a lot of excitement and plenty of blood spilled. John Steed had seen quite enough of these in his life to be rather unimpressed. But the others in the party were pleased with themselves, particularly Colonel Aristides, who had purchased the whole assignment of arms. He and Steed were standing on the terrace when Adriana called her brother from the grounds. Congratulations, Conrad. A splendid shot. Come here, dear boy. Come and have a glass of champagne. Conrad gave Steed a triumphant smile and was about to push by him when Steed grabbed the rifle. Excuse me. Hmm. An awesome weapon. Steed swung the rifle to his shoulder and squinted down the telescopic sights. He focused on the still form of Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel winked. Steed, with no expression on his face, returned the gun. Hmm. Fully automatic, but no first pressure on the trigger. Dangerous, unless you know what you're doing. But I do, Mr. Steed. Oh, yes. No one is in any doubt about that. Come on, Steed. Oh, going so soon, Steed? I'm afraid so. I really must be getting along. Uh, goodbye. Uh, look, uh, Steed, uh, I know you'll accept defeat in the right spirit. We uh, old Etonians, sentimentalists to the last man and all that. Uh, but uh, no hard feelings, I hope. All in the game, that it, Colonel? Ah, but of course, that's right. <laughs> the game's the thing. But uh, look here, Steed, I'm... I'm sorry about the woman, that, uh, that Mrs. Peel, uh... Oh, dash it, I, I mean to say, if you were fond of her... Uh, let's just say, the best man always wins. Oh, deuce sporting of you. Sporting, yeah. I always say we spend our lives living what we learned on the playing fields. Dirty work in the scrub. It gives me a lot of leeway. Bye, Colonel, for the moment. Some while later... Conrad insisted on taking Colonel Aristides round the grounds. He deliberately crossed the lawns to the place where he'd shot and dropped Mrs. Peel. She wasn't there. But... But she was here. Right here. Well, she's not now. But you saw her. Everyone saw her. Look at the grass. The grass is certainly flattened, but uh, there's no blood, is there? I must have got her. I must have. Ah, uh, she's tricked you, Conrad. She's tricked you. No wonder Steed took things as calmly as he did. But where is she? Where is she? Mrs. Peel was at that moment sitting on a fence in the cover of some bushes. When Steed's car appeared round the corner of the lane, she slipped out and thumbed a lift. Going my way? Where to? The rifle range to get a little more practice. Oh, that's not fair. I'd never used that weapon before. And he was an expert. Good shot, I'll grant him that. 
But during the short time I was forced to spend in his company, I gathered quite a few other ideas about Mr. Conrad. Psychopathic personality? To start with, yes. His ego has turned him into a one-shot man. Am I right? That's it. He prides himself on only using one bullet. So I waited. And when I saw his rifle come up... You dived down. It was certainly a very convincing death. Thank you. I was a bit concerned, though. What about? Well, that you might think I really was dead. Oh, not for a moment, Mrs. Peel. Not for a moment. Lady Adriana Beardsley was in the main drawing room of Stokely House, seated at her secretaire, busily counting out Colonel Aristides' pile of money when the door burst open. Oh, what is it? What is the matter, Conrad? The woman, Mrs. Peel, she's gone. Gone? You mean her body's been collected? Oh, of course. One can't allow dead bodies about the place. Bad for the police. She's gone. There's no trace of her being killed. Could you have missed her? No. No, I couldn't. I never miss. I'm certain I get her. Well, this is serious. I'll have the ground searched. Double the guard on the rifles. And first flight tomorrow, we move the colonel's consignment out. John Steed parked his car on the open road and opened the cocktail cabinet. Over a glass of champagne, he discussed the curious state of the Beardsley family with Mrs. Peel. It appears that Grandfather Hector Beardsley founded the family business during the South African War. He sold weapons to both sides. Immoral. Well, makers of armaments rarely think of moral issues. One of old Hector Beardsley's best-selling articles was a type of butterfly mine patented as the Adriana. That name again business boomed, not surprisingly, considering it was 1914, under the guidance of Hector's son. The father of Adriana and Conrad. What particular weapon christened him Conrad? Well, it was the other way round, actually. Little Lord Conrad was 18 months old in 1940 when he gave his name to a type of machine gun. Their father died on VJ Day. A disappointment, no doubt. Adriana and Conrad were children at the time. The business was mishandled, divided up, and finally sold. And they've decided to start it up again, with trimmings. The auction, the lot, including me. I felt like a slave girl standing there. Well, that attractive fantasy did cross my mind, Mrs. Peel. Uh, I did my best. Not good enough. You sold me and failed to buy the rifles. What are you going to do? Well, I've got you back, so first we finish this champagne. I'm with you there. Then? Dinner at the Rosen Crown in the village. Lovely. Coffee, or perhaps a little brandy to keep out the night air. Which should take us up to around midnight. And then? Then back into the attack. Midnight it is. At midnight, the moonlight was streaming across the silent gardens. Steed and Mrs. Peel, grateful of this, dodged from wall to fountain, from fountain to bushes. Careful. Careful from now on. Can't be guard somewhere. Right. I think the arms are in a hut in the trees. Shh, shh. Burn. By the wire. It's one of the men. Jackson, I think. Yes. And there's the hut. Get him. Right. Mrs. Peel wriggled her way through the undergrowth and under the wire. She whistled an obvious fake bird call. Jackson wheeled round, made directly for where Mrs. Peel was crouching. Mrs. Peel said, Boo to you too. <coughs> and chopped him. Steed joined her on the other side of the wire, and they made their way towards the hut. It was padlocked. Steed slipped his umbrella into the clasp and twisted. Hmm. No opposition so far. Over here, Steed. Boxes. 3,000 FF-70s. That's right. And 808 plastic explosives. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's take a look in here. Steed used the steel rim of his bowler to prise open a small crate. Mm. Oh, I was right. Look, a uh, long coil of black fuse wire and a box of detonators. Ah, oh, now the temptation is just too great. <laughs> I'm with you, Steed. Let's fix it. Colonel Aristides can say goodbye to his rifles and his revolution. And not to mention his uniform. Ah, well, now, when you put it like that, we are really doing him a favor. Come on, give me a hand with the case. But Conrad Beardsley, worried about the disappearance of Emma Peel, was still prowling the grounds. He came across the unconscious form of Jackson and advanced to the hut, just as Steed and Mrs. Peel had completed their tasks. Well, that's fixed it, I think. We are taking matters into our own hands. 
We should try the official approach through the ministry. At this time of night? No one would take us seriously. And if the colonel gets his hands on this lot and his coup succeeds... Mm, well, I suppose it would be an embarrassment to the government. Match? Right. Uh, come on. Oh, just a moment. Uh, force of habit. Steed removed his bowler, stuck it on the end of his umbrella, and pushed it out of the doorway into the moonlight. <laughs> you know, that's the first time it's ever played off. Conrad! I can see him from the window. Right, Mrs. Peel. It's all yours. Keep him busy. Leisure. Mrs. Peel grabbed a rifle, crawled through the window, and a few seconds later, Steed heard... Mm. Working hard on this case is our Emma. He slipped from the hut and made back across the lawn, banging straight into Adriana, who, aroused by the shooting, came running from the house. Conrad! Conrad, where are you? What's happening? What's going on? Evening, Lady Bursley. Uh, Allow me to explain. It's not what's going on, it's what's going up. Three thousand of the finest rifles that are ever likely to be used in a coup d'etat. Uh, Steve, how, how dare you? I'll kill you! Kill you! <laughs> Spoken like a true Bursley! <laughs> Mrs. Peel's shooting had improved. A few minutes later, she met up with Steed and Lady Beardsley, who was still proving difficult. <coughs> Conrad! Conrad, save the rifle! Uh, Mrs. Peel, as you seem to be doing all the work, would you mind that? Uh... I refuse! <coughs> ah, nicely thrown. Where's a brother? I got him in the shoulder and... The fool! He's going back into the hut! Come back, you fool! Come back! Well, he uh, always loved violence. I wonder if Lady Beardsley had any champagne in the house. Uh, don't wake her up. Let's find out, shall we? The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omer.